Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to quickly create a, a Ruby on Rails API, uh, make sure it works, and then deploy it to Heroku all in one video. And I think we might be able to get this done in 15-20 minutes. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, so first let me, so that way you guys can compare with what you got. These are the versions of the things I'll be using that I have. So Rails-V, so that's the Ruby on Rails uh, library, the framework, uh, Ruby, Dash V, so I have 2.70 for Ruby. Um, bundler dash V and gem dash V. So that's gem, that's the package manager for Ruby. Okay, cool. So now you know those things. Okay, so now we're going to do is we're going to create a new Rails project. Okay, and basically we're going to do, do a Rails new. We're going to call this Rails new cats. Cats API because we're gonna do cats. Okay, and I wanna do a couple flags. So first I'm gonna do a database flag because I wanna use Postgres and this just saves me time. PostgresQL. Okay, so the, idea, the point of that flag is to, it'll automatically configure it from the default SQL light settings to Postgres. And then hit dash dash API. This configures it so that way all the extra stuff for like views is not there so that way it's just for a setup for an api which is a little bit quicker to set up so we do this cool oh. okay we're all in we're all set up okay so now cats api is right there so i'm gonna go cd into that folder cats api Okay, good, good, good. Now let me just double check the database settings, make sure that's set up the way it should be set up. DB, actually that would be inside config, uh, database.yaml. So let's take a look, good, it's set up for Postgres. Okay, now for the production database, I want it set up with this setting. So I'm gonna delete all this because Heroku's just gonna have a URL um, that it's gonna feed in there. So there we go, that's set, that's good to go. Uh, and then for my local environment, okay, let me set the settings up. Where is it? Development tests, cats API test. That's all fine, but I want to set up the encoding pool. Okay. Should be trying to connect to my local. In order to specify that, so I'm going to do that here. Um, development host should be local host. Port should be 5432 for Postgres. And username or you. I think it's username. I have test. Actually, it might be user. Test. Password. Test. This is just my local test user. And then it says that database cats API development, so that's fine with me. And I'm just going to add these three to the testing one just in case I always get confused which one's running when I'm working locally. Okay. And. I think that is all I need. Okie dokie. So we'll leave that as that. So that's the main thing I wanted to make sure I checked. The gem file should be good. Nothing I have to change there. You can see there PG is already set up and SQLite's not there. So that's good to go. Um, yeah, so the next thing all we have to do is just do this. A Rails. G for generate, scaffold, cat. Okay, so we're gonna create a thing, an, a model called cat. Okay, and actually I'll do uppercase cat. Or I think just I need to put lowercase cat. And then we just put in a couple fields. So cats will have, if you go really simple, they'll just have a name. Okay, and nothing else. So let's hit enter. Okay. 
And that's gonna take a second. And there it goes. It scaffold everything. So see everything you need for a cat API is set. So if I were to go to config slash routes, okay, see all the routes for cats are set up. Okay, if I go to app and I go to models, there is the cat model right there. Not much to it. Okay, and then if I go to controllers, I go there's the cat's controller and see all the crud routes are all created for me. So it's all set to go. Uh, the only thing else I want to check is migration. So here's the migrate folder, and then this should be the file that says to migrate cats. And that's where it, that's exactly what it says. So see, it's going to migrate cats with the name field. See, all that from one command. Isn't that nice? So now the only thing I have to do is make sure that my database gets sets that up. So now I just run, uh, I think it's Rails. Uh, or no, actually, I think it's rake. Rake db migrate, I think is the command. And that's going to migrate the, the database. Oh, I didn't quite go the way we wanted it. Oh, we have to create db. Okay, so first it's a rake db. Then I think it's create. Okay, let's see what it said for that one. I think if I appear authentication failed for user test, couldn't create cast API. Authentication. Settings one of the settings isn't 100% right. Five four three two five four three two test test. Yeah, that should be the password. I am just going to use the test database because that exists. Okay. I'll change it again over here. Test. Save. Let's try rake db migrate again. And that's it. So there we go. So see the cat table was created. I, I can confirm that by just logging into my local Postgres. PSQL. And then what I want to do is connect to the test database. Okay, and then if I do slash dt, and there is the cat table. Okay, so back in my terminal. Uh, so now, this should be working. Let's give it a shot. Rails server. Okay, so the server is running on port 3000. On port 3000, so let's go to the, let's open up Postman uh, over here. Postman. So first, let's go create a cat. So localhost 3000 slash. Actually, I should check what the routes are going to be. I think it should just be cat. So we'll find out. It's going to be cat or cats. Cat. That's going to be a post. And the body will just be have a name. So let's hit send. 404 not found. Okay, so maybe it is cats. Mm -mm -mm. Promise I've expected token add. Okay, is something wrong with my. Oh, there's a random comma in my JSON. Okay, there we go. Let's do it again. And there we go. We made a cat. Okay, let's make another cat. Snowball. Cool. Now let's do a get on cats. Okay, so that's working. Okay, and then if I want to update a cat, so we'll say I want to update, update howdy, howdy two. We'll just change them to howdy, the third. And uh, oh, I didn't change it to a put. Put. So that was just the show route. Um, but good, that works. Um, let's try that again. Put and see now we change them to howdy three, and then let's delete howdy. Cool. And now if I go like this and then do a get, see howdy's gone. Okay, so the API works. So we are cooking with fire. Okay, save. Okay, now 
man, I'm not in a rush to go push this to GitHub because it's just a practice project. So instead of connect, instead of pushing this particular project to GitHub and then connecting my GitHub to Heroku, which is one fine way to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect to Heroku directly. So how do I do that? Okay, so what I can do is I just go to create a new application here on, um, all right, yeah, I, right here on Heroku. Or actually, I'll even show you the, even the easier way. Assuming you already have the Heroku CLI installed, all you have to do is type in Heroku create. So long as you've already logged in to Heroku on your CLI. So how do you know? I can type in Heroku login, and it'll let me log in, and we'll go through this whole process. Ta-da! And then you just type in Heroku create. Now, if you do this, what it's going to do is that instead of you pushing to GitHub and then GitHub updating Heroku, you're pushing to Heroku directly. So that means when you push to GitHub, it's separate than when you push to Heroku. It's going to create a new remote. So it's going to create a project, so Heroku create. So see, it's creating a project. And now if I do git remote, I see there's a new remote on this project called Heroku. So now I can do a git add all, let's, you know, let's commit everything. And when you create a Rails project, it automatically makes a git repo inside the folder. Keep that in mind. Uh, git commit dash m uh, API done. And then we push that to Heroku. Git push Heroku master, not origin master. Heroku master, that's going to push it to Heroku. And then I can watch the whole process of it. You know, we push it. It's going to fail. Okay. Fail to install gems. We have, well, let's see here. Oh, okay, so we have to fix something on the gem file. Malform, no, actually, malform shebang on what line? Uh, it's in the bin bundle. That's where it says. Okay, so it says right there, bin bundle. has a malform shebang, so I'm going to go inside the folder. There's this file called bundle. And the issue is that it should just say Ruby. So I'm going to delete the 2.7 and then that should fix. So then I do a new commit, git add, git commit dash M, bundle fix, git push origin, no, not origin, pushing it to Heroku master. Okay, so see now it's doing all the stuff. It's installing all the gems. Okay, and this takes a second. Technically after this, it'll be deployed. The problem is we haven't migrated our new online database. Like this sh should pick up, this will should realize that we need Postgres because it's gonna notice that inside the, uh, the gem files that we installed the Postgres gem. And based on that, it's actually going to automatically provision a Postgres database on Heroku. So we won't have to do anything. Okay. And then because we use that URL environmental variable in the database that was kind of already there. So again, I'll bring that up again. Uh, config database.yaml. Because we're using this right here for the database URL for production, Heroku is going to feed that environmental variable in there automatically when it provisions the database. So all I got to do now is I need to migrate the database on Heroku. So I need to do Heroku um, run, which means it allows me to run a command on the Heroku server. So I need, now I need to run that same command, rake db migrate. Okay, the db should already be created by Heroku. If not, we'll create it. So let's see here, Heroku run db migrate. And I don't have to put an app flag this time because when you have the Heroku remote connected, to your project, it then knows what app you're running the command for. So I don't have to put that extra app flag now. So it does that, so it's running the command. And let's see if we get the right response. Running up, so okay, that's that looks good to me. Uh, yep, so let's see here, migration, insert into ski migration. Yeah, that all looks good, okay. So it looks like the di database must have migrated. So I think we're good. So let's go back over here. Uh, I just want to get the URL from Heroku. So here's the URL of our Heroku application, which you can also get from the Heroku dashboard. 
So there it is. Copy. I'm going to take that into Postman. Slash cats. Okay, we're going to go first create a cat. So, yep, and it works. Our API is deployed. Okay, it's online. It works. Okay, and I don't have to really configure much. Was, this was all super easy. We did it in uh, literally 15 minutes. I said we could do it in 15 minutes, and it could have been uh, even a little bit faster um, without all the explanations and whatnot. So just to kind of show you sort of how Ruby on Rails really allows you to develop very rapidly. Okay, these sort of batteries included frameworks. Because um, I didn't really have to do like almost any coding. It just kind of all did itself. I just had to put in some commands and deploy it. Okay, but yeah, it works. So uh, leave it at that. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day and enjoy.